Hello, welcome to European Open Briefing for Thursday, October the 4th. I'm Rafael Bergian, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be having a look at what's happening in the currency markets today. So it's another day of a strong dollar story. Uh, we had a robust economic data yesterday, uh, which boosted the US currency. Uh, but uh, this also uh, drove U.S. Treasury yields to fresh highs uh, and the combination of high yields and a stronger dollar uh, is pressuring uh, equities and as well as emerging market currencies. Uh, so this morning there is a bit of a risk of sentiment in the markets. We can see uh, most Asian indices and European indices in negative uh, territory uh, and we're also seeing a stronger Japanese yen as well. Uh, Global bond yields, uh, apart from the from U.S. yields, uh, also got a, a shot up from the, the surge in U.S. yields yesterday. Uh, in particular, Japanese uh, government bond yields, the 10-year yield, uh, rose to fresh highs. But there still doesn't seem to be any signs of a Bank of Japan uh, intervention. So that's also uh, helping the Japanese currency. Uh, earlier, dollar yen had hit a fresh 11 months high. It's now eased slightly to around 111, 114. Point thirty. The dollar index uh, earlier broke above the 96 level. It's now trading uh, around 95.90. Uh, uh, if you look at European currencies, uh, both the euro uh, and the pound are attempting to recoup some of uh, yesterday's uh, sharp losses. Uh, the euro uh, came close to reaching the 1.16 level yesterday. Now uh, it's uh, struggling below the 1.15 uh, level, despite the fact that uh, there's easing, cons uh, easing of the concerns regarding uh, Italy's uh, budget uh, targets. Uh, as for Sterling, uh, Theresa May uh, gave her closing speech at the Conservative Party conference uh, and this was her most confident speech uh, yet. Uh, so that helped um, ease some concerns regarding, at least for the time being, uh, regarding her future as a party a leader, party leader. But if we have a look at what's happening uh, to the risk sensitive Aussie and the Kiwi, both uh, are currently uh, trading near their fresh two and a half a year lows. Uh, the Aussie currently around 0 0.7085, the Kiwi trading just below the 0 0.65 level against the US uh, dollar. Uh, even uh, the loonie, which was boosted early in the week from the, that NAFTA deal, uh, is uh, also came under pressure yesterday, though uh, this morning is more or less uh, flat. If you look at commodities, gold prices are holding around the 1,200 uh, level. Uh, oil prices uh, are also holding near their four-year highs, despite the fact that yesterday there was a huge jump in U.S. crude stocks, uh, and there are reports that Saudi Arabia and Russia have apparently uh, privately agreed to increase output to compensate for uh, falling production out of uh, Iran. Uh, but despite that, the oil prices uh, are still um, trading very close to those uh, four-year highs uh, touched yesterday. Gold uh, is up uh, despite the fact that treasury yields globally, uh, bond yields globally uh, are up. Uh, pound dollar is now uh, uh, best performer out of the major currencies, uh, followed by the dollar index. But at the bottom, we've got the Aussie and the Kiwi. So let's take a closer look uh, to the dollar yen pair. We can see uh, earlier today, uh, late yesterday, uh, there was uh, that uh, near one year high of 114.54. The dollar index hit a one and a half months high of 96.12. And we saw the 10 yield on treasury notes uh, climbing to a more than seven year high of 3.23. Uh, percent. So yesterday we had the ISM non-manufacturing PMI rising to 21 year high in September. Uh, the ADP employment uh, report uh, showed uh, private job gains of 30,000. So all of that points to a strong non-farm payrolls report uh, on Friday. Uh, we also had another speech by Fed Chairman Jerome Powell uh, yesterday. He, he su suggested that uh, US rates may go up above their estimated uh, neutral levels uh, and he also was confident that the U.S. Uh, economic expansion would continue for quite some time. Yes, so all of that has been very positive uh, for the U.S. currency uh, and has been pressuring other majors, uh, in particular the euro we can see 
uh, has been sliding uh, since uh, late September. Uh, so yesterday there was a brief relief uh, for the euro on reports that the uh, Italian government uh, will attempt to bring down the deficit uh, after uh, 2019. So 2019 they're sticking uh, to that big deficit of 2.4% of GDP uh, but they're aiming to bring that down to 1.8% uh, by 2021. Uh, uh, so the Italy now needs to submit uh, their budget plans by October 15th to the European Commission uh, and then uh, the European Commission would then have until the end of the month uh, to say whether or not they will approve it. Uh, so uh, that's p a potential um, timeline where we could see a fresh escalation in the standoff between Italy uh, and the EU. Uh, there has been some easing uh, in Italian government bond yields following those reports yesterday, but they do remain elevated, suggesting that markets are still concerned uh, about uh, what's going to happen uh, with uh, Italy. Uh, the euro has touched a one and a half months low, 1.1462, currently trading uh, slightly above that at 1.1480, uh, uh, but st still sharply down from yesterday's high of 1.1593. Uh, uh, and finally, quick look at the Australian dollar as well as a bit uh, to the New Zealand dollar, which um, is uh, very like the, uh, like the Aussie uh, both currencies have touched a fresh two and a half year low. Uh, the Aussie reaching 0 0.7073 and the Kiwi uh, reaching 60, 0.6481. Uh, so those were levels last seen in early parts of 2016. There was some positive data out of Australia early this morning in terms of trade numbers for August, which showed a bigger surplus than was uh, anticipated, but that didn't really help the Aussie uh, that much. The main concern uh, in the near term outlook is that uh, the US yields will continue to go up and whereas Aussie and Kiwi yields will remain flat. Uh, so that's the main reason that's pressuring both currencies uh, at the moment. It's going to be pretty quiet though for the rest of the day apart from uh, uh, US weekly jobless claims and factory orders. Uh, but we're also going to have a speech by Fed Governor Randall Quills. That's it for me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.